Hi, my name is Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. I'm going to teach you some aspects of research that you, so you can look this up on your own. And I'm going to debunk some of the me-search. So there's a lot of bad research on uh, PubMed. That's the website to go to to get the medical research. There's a meta-researcher named John Yonides, and I put his name down there. And he's got this very popular uh, article he published called Why Most Published Research Findings Are False. So I'm putting that below. It's quite technical. But anyways, the point is, most medical research is false. All right, let's talk about this. So here's an example of the dosage being too low. This is called the Hegstead Equation, named after David Hegstead, a nutritionist who published a paper in 1977 that really swayed the USDA to recommend low-fat diets and uh, causing tremendous amount of obesity and harm and heart attacks and diabetes and placking in the United States based on what's called epidemiological studies, the study of epidemics. So here is uh, at the bottom, we got saturated fatty acids as a percentage of energy. So how much saturated fat are you consuming? And then on the other side, change in LDL cholesterol. So what that means is how much your cholesterol is going up so you may have started off at 180, and now it's going up to, or I'm sorry, this is LDL, so it maybe starts off at 95, and then it goes up to 105 or something like that. So it's a change. Everybody starts at a different different place. Okay, so he, here you can see that the more saturated fat you eat, the higher your LDL goes up. So I have a few comments on this. But first, here's another uh, series of studies that show the exact same thing. And here's another. This is 395 experiments showing the more saturated fat you eat, the higher your LDL goes up. So here's the problem, though. The uh, saturated fatty acids as a percentage of energy starts at 2%, which is extremely low fat, and then it goes up to 34%. So this is an indication that the dosage wasn't high enough because the more fat that you eat, you get into ketosis, your body burns all this fat out of your blood, and the LDL goes down. So this is used over and over again on the internet to show that low-fat diets are way better than ketogenic eating or paleo eating or low-carb eating. But just let it be known that all these hundreds of studies, the, the uh, dosage was too low. And you got to get people into ketosis, and then uh, everything gets better. Let me show you that. So here's a study from 2008. Ketogenic diets are more likely to affect global improvement in markers of metabolic syndrome. What that means is, well, metabolic syndrome is the series of uh, blood tests and signs that you're heading into diabetes or heart disease. So you're overweight and your cholesterol is up and all these things. So now global improvement, that's a key term because... When you're ill, chronically like this, from bad eating, a lot of things get worse. So insulin gets worse and hormones get, you know, those are off. Testosterone can go down. Triglycerides go up. It's not just LDL. You can't be a medical or holistic practitioner and just look at LDL. That's ridiculous. There's just so many factors. So let's go over this quickly. Um, you can pause. You can look at the words. But on the far right, on at least on my right, we got total saturated fatty acids in the blood. The red bar goes down. That just means that the saturated fats in your blood get eaten up in a ketogenic diet. Move over one, uh, two to HOMA, H-O-M-A. That actually is a test for insulin sensitivity. So that gets better. Insulin goes down. Glucose goes down. Small LDLs go down. So there are different sizes for LDL particles, which are proteins. The smaller ones are the dangerous ones. Those go down. And um, compare all this to the blue. That's low-fat eating. So the ketogenic diet is better than a low-fat diet. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on. All right, so let's talk about studies and how they're laid out. At the bottom of this py pyramid, we have editorials and expert opinions. And then above that, we have case series and case reports. So what that means is we got a patient or several patients that do a therapy, and over time they get better, and that gets recorded. The word anecdotal means not written down. So if you ever hear somebody say, well, that's just anecdotal evidence, I mean, technically it means that it's just verbal. Okay, so now we have case control studies 
which involves a, a group, two, maybe two groups of people or maybe three. And then cohort studies. The word cohort means group. So all of these green, yellow, and the orange section of this pyramid, uh, those are epidemiological studies. That's the study of epidemics. You cannot get cause from these types of studies. You can only get cause from randomized control trials. So that's where they have two groups of people and they try to make them all equal and then they do something to one of the groups. Okay, and then at the very top we have systematic reviews. Now that's a collection of studies done and they review all of them and hopefully those studies are randomized controlled trials and maybe throw in some cohort studies but leave the case control studies alone because those are too weak. All right, let's go over this a little bit deeper. Here we have this pyramid at the very top. We have got the randomized control trials. And from that, you can get this statement. It is shown that. So it's a fact that this is true. And then below that, we have it is likely. And below that, it says there are signs that. And at the very bottom, experts are of the opinion. So randomized control trials, that's where it's at. Okay, so none of these show cause. These are the studies, and I'm using different terms now. We've got the cohort studies, if you ever heard the term, epidemiological, empirical, and observational. I had somebody tell me on my YouTube channel that everything you're saying goes against ep uh, all, the epi all the empirical studies since the beginning of research. And I'm like, yeah, it does. Like, take those empirical studies and throw them out because you can't get cause from them. Okay. And so these types of studies can only show associations, likely, signs, and associated. Okay, the media, politicians, and others get fooled by these all the time. These are often used unethically to forward an agenda. People want you to do certain things, buy their product, eat the way that they think is moral, live the life that they think is right, and they, and they show you these studies that are weak, they're uh, epidemiological, they don't find cause, and let's not get fooled by these people trying to control you with false or misleading data. Okay, only an experiment can show cause. So randomized control trial, you may have heard the term double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trial and just shorten it to RCT. All other studies um, do not show, show causation. The design of the RCT still has to be very high quality. Okay, simple by statistics in the observational studies. Now, these are the studies that you basically want to avoid because you can't get caused. But here's one thing that you can know if you happen to read one of these observational studies. It's RR, relative risk. Okay, so they have two groups of people, and they observe what's going on, and they do some math, and they come up with a number. So RR is the relative risk of acquiring a condition, and if it's, if it's, great, if it's greater than 1.0, then the chances are higher that you will acquire it. If the RR is less than 1.0, then there is a protective factor against the condition. For example, 1.31 means of RR means your chance of acquiring the studied condition is 31% higher than those people who will not get it. So 31% higher off of that number 1.31. Okay, but here's the trick. Any RR, relative risk, less than 2.0 can be ignored. Your chance of acquiring the condition needs to be higher than 2.0 or 200% to start paying attention to the study and to start changing your life. That's because observational studies are weak and misleading. The RR for smoking is 15 to 30. That's much greater than 2.0. The RR for red meat and cancer is 1.18. So cancer is not caused by red meat. The World Health Organization now claims Red meat, or meat in, in general, is a possible carcinogen, but they only base this on observational studies. There are RCTs available, randomized control trials. They're available, but they refuse to look at them. Okay, so just ignore the World Health Organization. It's just a group of people, and they make mistakes too. Okay, now, when you look at these observational studies, there are two groups of people that have been um, clumped um, separately, and this is where all the confusion reigns, right here, because you have this group called the non-adherers. They don't go to their doctor. They don't listen to their doctor. 
they drink more alcohol, they smoke more, they exercise less, they're more likely to be overweight, and they eat meat. The adherers go to their doctor and listen to their doctor. They drink less alcohol, smoke less, exercise more, they're more likely to be normal weight, and they eat less meat. So, of the non-adherers, what makes them unhealthy? All of it? No, you can't say that in an observational study. You have to do an experiment on these people to find out, is it the smoking that makes them more, uh, makes them unhealthy? Is it the, the meat? Is it the alcohol? So, you, so now with the adherers, um, are they healthier because they're eating less meat? You can't say that with an observational study. Um, and you could say that, well, these people eat more beans. That's why they're healthy. You can't say that unless you actually do an experiment. Okay, which factor causes health or illness? RCTs, randomized control trials, weed out false data. But doing these studies um, is difficult. They are expensive. They have a low profit margin. They're laborious and time-consuming. So one of my practitioners in my office, Kristen Klor, did a study on sleep. She works at University of Michigan Hospital part-time and works in my office part-time. And her study was supposed to be a year long. It took six years. I'm putting her link below. She's got a YouTube channel. I'm putting that below. Okay, but yeah, time-consuming, expensive. Um, observational studies are the fast food of research. They're cheap, higher profit, fast, easier to get your PhD with. As simple as sending out surveys and crunching numbers. It just takes somebody to type up some surveys, make it as technically correct as you possibly can, send it out, get some back, crunch the numbers. That's an observational study. You're not doing anything to anybody. You're just asking questions. Okay, so we've had 110 years of observational studies that have created the USDA low-fat food pyramid that has caused obesity and destroys our health faster than ever before. 110 years of observational studies that have created Prop 65, which is California's law, to label everything as carcinogenic, including vans and coffee. 110 years of observational research will lead you to only eat seven foods. There's a very popular YouTube personality who is eating a low-fat diet. I'm not going to say any names, but this person only eats seven foods because this person is basing their nutritional advice on observational studies. Other sciences are way more important, and here are some. Physiology is way more important than observational studies. So I, I coined the term follow the physiology as uh, I have several videos on this, like I think all doctors need to follow the physiology. Nothing beats what, nothing beats knowing what's actually going on inside. Okay, and there's only one prime cause of cancer. There's not hundreds or thousands of causes of cancer. There's one prime cause of cancer. So tell that to uh, the California legislators to reverse Prop 65. Okay, another science is pathophysiology. That's lactic acidosis. I have plenty of videos on that, but that's the creation of disease, pathos being disease. Biophysics. Physics controls chemistry. So there's a guy named Jack Cruz. He studies biophysics and teaches that, and I got videos on that. Um, I love studying that subject. I mentioned here biochemistry, the foundation of the building blocks of your body and food. And then history. So um, we know that people ate about the same amount of meat, 100 years ago, they had way less heart disease and cancer and strokes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what's the difference between then and now? It's the amount of white refined bread, grain products, high fructose corn syrup. It's just the junk food. Okay, it's not the meat. The meat's never been the problem. Okay, and, and then, of course, knowing your anatomy and knowing the anatomy of the cells, too. So the mitochondria and the nucleus and the cell membrane and knowing that the cell membrane is the most important part of the cell, not the nucleus. And what's the cell mem membrane made out of? It's made out of fat. You gotta have healthy fat to keep your cell membranes happy. Okay, the last science is not really science, but it's common sense. So if uh, nine of the top 11 foods that we consume in the United States are sugar, grains, and low fat. Here's the list right here. And so this just goes to show you that we're sick, not because of beef and chicken, but because of grain-based desserts, uh, breads, pop, pizza, beer. Um, we got grain-based Mexican food, burritos, tacos, tortillas, dairy desserts, potatoes, 
Okay, and there's low-fat foods and there's fruit drinks at the bottom. Okay, so moving on. Um, I'm going to show you. So here we, we're going to go to PubMed. Um, I'm actually going to. So what you do is you type in PubMed in your search box and you click on um, PubMed. And so this is how you find some research. So if you're interested, just go in the search box. I'm going to type in keto genic and yet now you have all these options you can pick ketogenic diet uh, cancer diabetes epilepsy etc etc uh, let's just see what happens when i do ketogenic and just leave it at that so we got 1742 items that show up now here's the trick you're the end consumer of this research go over to the left here and click on clinical trial just skip all the surveys and the the uh, cohort studies and all that stuff just go straight to the clinical trials and then now we have 147 trial out of 1700 studies um less than 10 percent are able to give cause okay so then you can um look at these and just click on what you're interested in so let's click on this one i haven't clicked on this one before so i don't know what's going to come up this is an online intervention comparing a very low carb ketogenic diet and lifestyle recommendations versus a plate method diet in overweight individuals. Not sure what a plate method diet is, but here it says background, objective methods, results, conclusions. You can just jump to the conclusions. Individuals, individuals with type 2 diabetes improved their glycemic control and lost more weight after being randomized to a very low carb ketogenic diet and lifestyle online program rather than a conventional low-fat diabetes diet online program. Thus, the online... Okay, so they're saying that, and this, you know, studies show over and over again, the ketogenic diet is better than a low-fat diet. So regarding uh, diabetes and cancer and heart disease. Okay, so there you go. Now you know how to do it. But the key here is to, uh, to click on clinical trial up here, and uh, you want your species to be human. Now they do uh, studies on rats, so you can... Um, you know, just click click off of human. Now we can have other animals showing up too. And uh, anyway, so have fun with this. this is PubMed, and it's easy to use. And um, there are some words in here that you're not going to understand unless you look up look them up in a dictionary. But some words you can just skip by, and they're not that important. You just want to get to the conclusions and and look up some of the words there. Okay, so that's that's how you use PubMed for beginners. Okay, let's wrap this up. So I just want to go over this with you so that you can make decisions based on your own research using PubMed, ignoring the weak, misleading epidemiological studies that all kinds of YouTubers and doctors and politicians want you to do based on what they think is morally right or what they think is nutritionally best for you. You can actually go, and, and you got maybe coworkers or family members who say, oh, don't eat all that fat, it's really bad for you. Just go on PubMed, print off a few studies, and say, look, it's really good. And, uh, and then they won't be arguing so much because you're actually doing, uh, using an RCT uh, a study, randomized controlled trial. So if you like this information, give me a thumbs up. I hope it's really helpful. Please share and subscribe and uh, share this with other people that may be being harassed regarding their ketogenic diet. All right, thanks. Bye.